Hi there, it's me, Dr. Qureshi again. I hope everyone is doing great. Today, I wanted to talk about something very, very important I saw the other day. Um, it's important from a, a lot of perspectives, obviously from the patient's perspective because it's an emergency situation, and also for other subspecialty doctors to know what to do in this kind of a situation. Uh, if the ER is equipped to treat those kind of situations or not, and even the urgent care, because a lot of times patients do like to go to the urgent care, first and foremost, depending on what time of the day they are experiencing their symptoms and so on and so forth. So this patient was sent to us through triage. It's an emergency situation that I had to see the other day. Um, a middle-aged man, and he came in with sudden onset of loss in vision in one eye, and mind you, it was painless. So when you hear those kind of uh, particular, very classic uh, presentations where it's a male, he has history of diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and I had to ask him those kind of questions, obviously, but the triage did pretty good in determining if it was an emergency or not. Obviously, if a patient is saying, I had great vision, and then suddenly I lost it, I can't see out of one eye, it's sudden onset, is painless. Um, he was able to see pretty good um, initially and then after a few days um, maybe like two days I think he waited like two days he said he had no vision at all he literally had counting fingers which means that he could only see barely see my fingers he could count my fingers at a particular distance when I stood away from him so I had to dilate him that's the first line of um, protocol that we have to do we have to dilate both the eyes regardless of which eye he loses his vision in after dilation I was very confident that there was a stroke about to happen and it turned out there was a thrombus and an embolus actually that I saw in one of his retinal arteries now remember if a person does not have controlled hypertension or high cholesterol he pres or even diabetes he presents with those kind of symptoms um you you got to keep in mind that it's a carotid artery that could be involved and that's what i wanted him to get checked immediately but i wanted to dilate him obviously to see if he had an embolus or not and i did see an embolus now the embolus comes from the thrombus which is the plaque in the arteries uh, mostly it's in the carotid artery and from the carotid artery it can move it can dislodge and move and go to the eye in the form of a retinal artery embolus and that can cause a retinal artery occlusion which means that the blood supply and the oxygen supply to that area is depleted which means that the patient is going to lose his vision a and then that embolus can further travel to the brain and cause a stroke and also possibly death so I had to send this patient immediately to the ER and I wanted the ER doctors to do a carotid Doppler ultrasound immediately as an emergency protocol and then also do carotid endarterectomy, which is the surgeon in the ER opens up the carotid artery. Now for these things to happen, timing is very important because if we delay the situation or if the patient himself had delayed the situation, because let's be honest, a lot of times patients don't like to go to their doctors. Patients just are reluctant. They have anxiety, stress, uh, whatever, in going to their physicians, doctors or whatever. Um, but if the situation is like this, where they had great vision and then they lost it and it was sudden onset, they gotta call their um, eye specialist. I would recommend that because why? Because the urgent care or ER are not fully equipped with these kind of um, machines, slit lamps. They do not have that kind of training in order to determine what the cause of the problem is and how to even diagnose and treat it. Um, so I, I encourage patients, audiences, whoever is watching this, and I know a lot of you have asked this question in, in the blogs and messaged me directly and ask these questions even at, at our clinics. What do we do if we have that situation? I always say, please, please, please call us, come to us. So long story short, an other thing that we can do in the clinic, because I was blessed because we have an amazing team, Dr. Lahi at Lahi Eye Care. Total Eye Care has um, selected some of the best nurses um, uh, technicians, scribes, a team of excellent doctors we have. Everyone is very passionate about helping patients, helping humanity. And that's literally what our motto is at work. So I had this uh, technician slash scribe slash nurse in the room with me. Her name is Leslie. I have to mention her name because she went above and beyond. As I was uh, checking this patient in the exam room, I told her, can you please get him admitted to the uh, to the hospital? And she made this phone call at Lafayette General Hospital. Um, their ER was uh, ready to see our patient. And that was very nice that we were able to send him to the ER in a timely manner. 
Now, some of the things that you can still attempt in the clinic before the patient gets to go to the ER is um, increase the carb carbon dioxide level in the in the in the brain uh, by giving him a paper bag to breathe into, um, and you can ask him to do like you know fast breathing um, in order to dislodge that embolus from that area. You can also do digital massage. You can massage that eye area uh, with your hand manually. You can also do paracentesis, which is uh, pricking into the cornea in order to decrease the pressure. And number four, you can also try to give them uh, a water pill, which is known as acetazolamide, which is a diuretic. And all these things are available and all these things can be done in the clinic, but are they effective? I don't think they are that effective. The first and foremost thing is get the patient um, in the ER. Timing is very important. And the patient needs to understand and realize how dangerous this could be if it goes, because I saw the embolus moving. When I checked his eyes through uh, through the slit lamp with my 90 lens, I could see it moving. And if it's moving, it means it's going to go to the brain then, uh, because that's its uh, route of uh, travel. So. So we, we fixed that problem. We got a call from the uh, from the ER later, and they said, thank you for uh, sending this patient. We were able to prevent a stroke from happening, a paralysis from happening, even death possibly from happening, and they were able to perform the surgery on him immediately. I think the same day they did the surgery. So the take-home message is when it's an emergency, don't delay it, uh, call us. If you call the urgent care, that's fine. They're going to send your patients to us or the ER is going to send it to us. But just at least make an attempt to call and do not take it lightly. That's it for today. I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Bye-bye.